Go ahead, uh, question. All right, so uh, I want to uh, ask an admittedly somewhat vague question. Um, Ayn Rand wrote a, uh, a chapter in uh, one of her books uh, uh, titled The Monument Builders. And uh, I know that uh, a quote of yours from 2017 has uh, been going around uh, that we shouldn't even have uh, a Washington Memorial and all these other monuments. And um, I, a number of, uh, just a number of thoughts have been rolling around my head about all this. It's, it seems such a muddle uh, how many different bad ideas are mixed in. I mean, for starters, uh, it, bothers me that a tiny minority opinion is trouncing a majority opinion in, in many of these places where the majority of people wouldn't even be inter you know, wouldn't want these statues taken down. And these people are completely bypassing any, any democratic process. But um, Rand made a more general point that we shouldn't even be funding monuments of any sort, that they should be privately funded and owned. And also, I guess, made the um, made a bold statement, really, that when you look around the world, it's the authoritarian countries that uh, that demonstrate the most lavish uh, monuments to uh, typically to their their leaders and effectively to themselves. And I wonder if you have uh, comments on all this. Oh, sure. I mean, I have a lot of comments on it. Uh, so first, with regard to the the quote taken out of context that was uh, dropped on Facebook where I said there shouldn't even be a Jefferson Memorial or um, a, a Lincoln Memorial. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the way it was presented was as if I don't like Jefferson or Lincoln or I think they're equal to, uh, uh, you know, the, the Jefferson Davis or, 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 um, or Lee. Uh, no, I, I, I think it's fantastic that there's a Jefferson Memorial and a Lincoln Memorial, and they certainly deserve those memorials. I just don't think the state should own them. I think they should be privately built and privately funded and privately made, but they, are, they, they certainly are deserving of, of uh, memorializing and celebrating with sculptures and memorials and street names and whatever we can to remember the giants that they are. Uh, but it's not the state's business to build such memorials. And you can see that with the effort to build a FDR memorial. Uh, and, and what next? Uh, an Obama memorial, a Trump memorial? I mean, um, uh, FDR was not a good president. Uh, many Americans who, who know a little bit of history know uh, that he did a lot of damage to this country and has set us up on a path uh, from which we are suffering today and an economic path, a cultural path, a philosophical path. And yet, why not build him a memorial? He's, he's admired and he's respected by a majority. But this is the problem. Once the government gets to decide who was a good president and who was a bad president, who deserves a memorial, who doesn't deserve a memorial, not, not a good idea. Now, somebody made the joke of, well, shouldn't there, you mean there won't be paintings inside government buildings? Sure, but they don't have to be paintings of presidents or paintings that pick certain people out um, and, and commemorate certain people, uh, or they can be. I, you know, I don't really care. But uh, the point was that the government should not get into the business of ideas and projecting ideas to the public. It, you know, if you want to have paintings and sculpture inside uh, government buildings, so be it. I mean, we as taxpayers should think about that if that is the best use of our tax money is to make uh, make buildings that the government. Has. I mean, generally, I don't like the fact that government buildings are big, ostentatious, uh, expensive, and 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 looking down. They're always on a hill. They're always uh, in some cities. You're not allowed to build taller than the state capital or whatever. I mean, that gives government a kind of imposing status of a of a king and, a, and an authoritarian that I think is inappropriate. I mean, what Ayn Rand talked about in the Monument Builders, and I haven't read it in a long time, is, is she noted the authoritarians always build monuments to themselves, to their rule, whether it's the, the pyramids, which is what the pharaohs built to themselves, um, or, or you just think about Hitler's grand architectural plans for Germany and Berlin. And, uh, and the states, uh, you know, there's definitely Nazi art if you think about uh, communist art, I mean, art 
promoted by the state to glorify the state, to, prov to glorify the agenda of the state. I'm against all of that. Uh, it, so, uh, but part of the monuments they built, and this goes to FDR, are not literally monuments. Part of the monuments they build are social programs. Uh, FDR's monuments that we have is basically the regulatory state, Social Security, Freddie, and, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, um, you know, the, the Federal Home Loan, uh, Federal Home Loan Board, I think it's the board, uh, HUD, uh, I mean, the whole, the whole institutionalization of the, the regulating finance uh, is is a legacy, a monument of FDRs. The, the, the welfare state is a monument of FDR. Social Security is a monument of FDR. And, and the same with Johnson. I mean, Johnson will be remembered for Medicare, Medicaid, uh, and, the, and the war on poverty. Uh, Nixon's monuments are the war on drugs and the environmentalist, environmental regulations, the EPA. And uh, people don't know this, but almost all the environmental regulations that we have today were at least instituted originally under under Nixon and then uh, expanded under other presidents. So um, it's uh, it's not the uh, it, it's not just physical monuments. It's it's the the glorification of the state and the glorification of themselves that that uh, leaders are involved in, and it's at whose expense? It's the expense of all of us always. Monetary expense, life. Uh, going to war for the state, so literally life, uh, the glorification, all of it involves our money, our time, our lives, our freedom. Uh, so I'm against it, but but it, nothing I said should diminish the greatness and grandeur of Lincoln and Jefferson. I love the Jefferson Memorial. I love the quotes. I love that. Yeah, the they're beautiful. Which was, Washington uh, Monument. Yeah, the, well, I hate the Washington Monument. No, I think the Washington Monument is a disgrace um, it, it is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. It is a tribute to Egyptian culture. Yeah, why right. Washington would, would, why you would have a monument to uh, uh, one of the greatest men of history that, that, that is a, uh, a blisk, uh, a, an Egyptian form, um, instead of a, 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 a real sculpture, like, you know, Daniel Chester French, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, sculpted the Jefferson Memorial, one of the great, maybe the greatest American sculptor of all time. What did Jeff, uh, Washington doesn't deserve that. And by the way, there's a great story about the Washington Monument. You know, the Washington Monument, it, 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 Congress decided to build the Washington Monument and allocated funds to build it. I think it took them 40 years to build it. They ran out of money and construction wasn't that good. It, it was just a disaster from day one. It took them forever to build it. it, it, it give you a, a counter example to that is the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty was a gift uh, from France, but it was not built with public money. It was built with private money. Private money was raised in order to assemble it in New York. It was assembled in something like three months. It was super fast, super quick. And it is, a, in, in many regards, it is a private monument because it was funded privately. So I think that is the contrast. I, I, I you know, Washington Monument, it's a disgrace uh, and, 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 and a sad, sad that that is what, um, what the government, Congress, chose to use to commemorate, um, uh, you know, President Washington. Uh, so it, uh, that's a great uh, contrast. Yep. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, yourunbrookshow. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.